Very good. Ah, good morning, good morning, and welcome to Wicklow Good News with me, Gillian Gossel. My guest this morning is Gavin Clifford. He's a very young entrepreneur, and he has created the quite famous Bonnock Irish Gin. So welcome to the show, Gavin. Thank you very much for having me on. Yeah, yeah, we're laughing, saying gin, gin, very needful in this time, <laughs> in this time of COVID. Uh, but I want to just talk to you a little bit about the, the, you creating this business. You were working in the States in the hospitality industry, in the drinks industry? Yes, so... Um... I suppose we started off, my, the, the distilleries started up by myself and my father, and we started late 2016, so a bit over three and a half years ago now. Um, and yeah, the whole, the whole idea really came from the, the whole American craft drinks movement. And um, Myself and my father had a very keen interest in, I like to joke, saying we had a keen interest in drinking, but we, we didn't really. We had a keen interest in, in sort of um, good quality, handmade craft spirits, um, especially as we're Irish, obviously, obviously Irish whiskey was, was a great passion of ours. So, um, so the, the whole idea really started there. Myself and my father visited many distilleries throughout Ireland and the UK and getting to see who was making what, how they were making it and the people behind the brands. And that was what really intrigued us. Um, and then after I went to college here, um, I didn't really exactly know what I wanted to do. So we decided to take a bit of a sabbatical and head off to the States where I worked in the um, hospitality industry. Which in is the Hamptons, no less. Well, no, we worked in New York City. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, basically <laughs> the hospitality industry is just a fancy way of saying I worked in the bar um, and worked as a bar manager over there, which was <laughs> always a passion of mine. I worked in bars all throughout my college career and all the rest of it. Um, so yeah, it was very comfortable where I was, but it, it was really just amazing just to see the people coming in. You had you had people from big companies coming in, and um, they'd be doing a nice spend on their credit card with you, so they'd be buying their drink and giving it out to people in the bar, and that was great for us as bartenders because we got lovely tips out of that. Um, but the other side of the coin was the guy who came in with um, a box underneath his arm. Um, he'd take 20 minutes of your time, he'd sit down, he'd go through the drinks with you, be it beer, be it vodka, be it whiskey. Um, and the passion that these guys conveyed about what they were doing was just incredible. Um, it was really, really captivating. Uh, and then they'd invite you out to maybe see the brewery, the distillery. Um, and what really got me uh, was, was just the same guy who came in with the bottle under his arm, was the same guy who explained everything to us, was the same guy who brought us to the, uh, the distillery or the brewery. Uh, he could have been making that one day, he could be on the road the next day, he could be doing anything. So it was kind of a romantic notion that we got. Um, and as I was over there, obviously the phone call home on a Sunday evening was always, Jesus, this is really taken off here. And it was something that we'd loved. So we presumed that it would probably come back to Ireland. Um, so that's where our whole journey started, really. Wow. So you travelled all across France and the UK doing research. And then, I mean, your, your gin, the Bonnock was called Bonnock 24 originally, and now it's called Bonnock Irish Gin. Um, yeah, exactly. It's, yeah. it, I mean, gin is flavored vodka. Is that right? Am I right on that? Is it, um, or you're, fl- you'd, you'd be almost, you'd be almost right. Um, so, just before th- this whole thing started, really, the, the whole health crisis started. We were about to open up uh, what we're calling a gin school, and um, where you're basically going to come down to our distillery. We'll give you a tour. We'll show you around. We'll give you the background of gin, and you'll actually make your own bottle of gin. Um, so, if you really, really want to find out about how what gin really is, you can come down and see us hopefully when this whole thing is over. Oh. But you're not you're not too far off with with um with gin being a flavoured vodka. So so they're both white spirits and um, they both start their lives as a neutral spirit. So that means it's it's um it's an alcoholic spirit with no flavor of course. Um, now vodka continues their life like that. Vodka is effectively just a neutral alcoholic spirit um no flavours. Gin basically takes it a step further and goes for a couple of more distillations. Um, and during those distillations, we add in what we call in the gin business botanicals, which is basically any ingredient, any fruit, berry, um, spice, flour, whatever it may be that's just used to flavor the gin. Um, gin needs to predominantly be flavored by uh, juniper, which gives quite a spicy piney flavor um if you take a juniper berry you smell it you just go oh my god that is gin gin and a berry yeah. um so yeah you're not too far off with saying 
vodka or sorry gin is a flavor vodka so yeah. you i'm reading up and i haven't actually tasted your gin so apologies that i, I haven't done it i will afterwards afterwards that's but all it's, right <laughs> it's a fresh green citrus mint star anise these are some of the fl- botanicals you're using yeah so we have we produce two gins um and look basically we wanted to create fantastic irish products um that were kind of inspired by the local area so we use like there's a lot of mainstays in gin obviously as i said every gin has some juniper and but then after that the world is kind of your oyster in terms of what you can use the flavor of gin but um more often than not you're gonna have some kind of a spice in a gin be it cardamom star anise coriander nutmeg uh, what about chocolate have, you can put chocolate <laughs> not maybe not processed chocolate but um cacao nibs yeah, definitely. Yeah. They're, 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 I, I was working on something to see could we get it out for last uh, Christmas, which was a chocolate orange gin. I'm sure that would be, be a big hit. Oh, well, hopefully it will be next Christmas <laughs> anyway, yeah. Um, okay, so this is a really exciting thing. You're based in Newtown, Mount Kennedy. Your gins are all handcrafted. How many people? Yeah. Is this you and your father? Is there, are there more people? It's, yeah, um, my father has a day job. My father's Michael. We'll, we'll call him Michael. Michael has a day job as well. Yeah. Um, so I'm basically on the front line um, on my own for most of the week. And then I, I look after basically production and sales and marketing. Um, father looks after the, the back end of things. Obviously, uh, all the, I, the f- financial bits, I end up with the box of receipts at the end of the month and I just fire them his way. I'm sure he wishes I probably was a bit more organized with that. But sure, look. Um, and he's absolutely brilliant he'll come down you know he can he, he can do an eight nine ten hour a day and then he'll come down to the distillery and help us um help us out bottling and finishing boxing and, and getting orders out when we need it wow so you are living your dream what you saw yeah, yeah. you're, you're doing it more like a nightmare but yeah <laughs> absolutely yeah we're living okay so here. you're a young entrepreneur you're doing this amazing product um I, i'm assured my daughter works in uh, what well, she did a student in, in Mickey Finn's and Red Cross. It's the favorite gin there. It's just giving you a plug for both, both establishments there. But COVID-19 happened and you guys spotted a gap in the market. And this is not a, a commercial gap, a need. So tell me about that. Yeah. So look at the drinks industry. Uh, I'm sure it's, it's pretty obvious, but you know, Christmas is our big, big, heavy time. Um, lots of gifting and lots of people going out and Christmas parties and all that kind of stuff. And then January, um, January, February is always very, very quiet because people are broke and fed up <laughs> and they're on their health buzz. So uh, we started off the year slow as we do every year um, and every drinks company does. And then we were just gearing up for uh, Paddy's Day, uh, which is kind of the, the kickoff of the tour season again. And we were just about to launch as I said, our gin school. And, and we were quite literally uh, one week out from doing a big press drop and press release. And then this whole nightmare started kicking off. Um, and then, as I said, we, you know, slowly through, we still were sitting on a nice bit of stock that we would have had from, from Christmas that we didn't go through. Um, that you'd always kind of have there in the distillery. And uh, uh, we got, you know, the lockdown came in and... Uh, it just kind of slowly, slowly, slowly crept in, and we weren't seeing any anything happening, anything going on with our with the gin sales, um, where they'd normally be picking up, you know, um, which was obviously a bit nerve wracking for ourselves. But then went into lockdown, and we realised, look, all the bars are closed here. Uh, if the bars are closed, we're not selling any gin, you know. There's no outlets, um, and we had a bit of stuff hanging. We had a bit of alcohol and, and some more raw ingredients hanging around. And uh, we saw online just that there, there was distilleries in the States starting up doing this. There was distilleries in the UK starting to do this. And what um, is it? Tell people what, what is it that you were and, doing? And why couldn't we do it ourselves? So we looked, we, we had the raw ingredients for hand sanitizer. Hand sanitizers, yes. So um, we just said we, 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 we better jump on this. You know, people were scared. Uh, and we had a little, as you said, there's a little gap in the market. We had a little bit of raw ingredients that we could do something to help the community. Um, just obviously the healthcare workers in the front line doing their bit and and we just kind of felt like we were either sitting around or we could we could put our our expertise to good use so you put a few notes out on facebook and instagram and what happened then 
it just, it, I was inundated. Uh, as, a, as, as I think I said before, we put my, my, my phone number somewhere on the internet and I don't know how, where it is, but I must try and get it down. My phone just starts absolutely blowing up. Um, social media accounts, both Facebook and Instagram, just the, they were filling up. The, the account activity was going through the roof. Um, our website contact page was was off the hook, you know, and it was just quite, it, what really started me was it was just people who were ordinary people from around the area, and everybody had a story. Everybody is looking after somebody who's older. Everybody is looking after other people who they have no ties to, and they're looking after them as go to their heart. Um, people have businesses they wanted to keep open. Um, people were going through cancer treatment themselves and they were afraid of their lives to leave their house um and it was just really absolutely it, it was it was crushing me you know it was it was it was incredible the stories that were coming in um so we just had to do the bit this bit to help people ourselves you know and you've made donations to local charities of hand sanitizers. yeah so we had um to uh, again people are looking after people for, for no well not no apparent reason they're, they're looking after them out of the good of their hearts you know they're looking after them because they because they're good people and, and, they, and they think that's what they have to do of course you know um so the likes of Greystone's home health who are looking after elderly in the area um st catherine's inside newcastle hospital and um we had the red cross down as well so as you said we we just wanted to do our bit to to kind of ease the anxiety of these people like i'm sure they could have got sanitizer in some way shape or form but i, the, I don't the know the I, through the roof and they were really like people were honestly very very scared yeah and no, i think you're right because it, the, 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 it's impossible to buy you go anywhere it's i i have not seen hand sanitizer except yeah. the shops food shops they have it at, at the entrance now you had to modify your production lines because you're not selling bottles of gin anymore and you have to you're trying to get spray things and People don't normally, are saying, don't normally spray gin into their mouths. Maybe it'll be a thing and then after COVID. So you have to modify your actual physical production. Yeah, so I suppose um, we are, we're set up to make gin. So we've got still to make the gin. We've got vats. We've got a bottling line that fits our bottles. Um, we use glass bottles for the gin, of course. As you said, they're very different than what you might use for hand sanitizer. Um, so we kind of went very ad hoc, you know, we have, we have some of the raw ingredients there and, and it is a bottle line as well, but it's not quite the same. Um, so uh, we started getting out a lot of the measuring kits. Uh, we were hand filling bottles as we were at the very, very start with the gin. Um, so we're measuring out 500 mils. We're pouring it individually into bottles. We're firing the caps on ourselves. Um, and there's just a, we, we, we basically at the start had, had some stock that we were sitting on there that we would always have ourselves uh, and that went very quickly to the local area um, to the local community uh, and we realised that just we can do more so that we we said there's, there, this isn't doesn't look like it's going away anytime soon unfortunately um, but we, we can do our best to, to kind of knock it on the head um, so we said look we'll, we'll go into kind of full production we'll procure more ingredients and we'll procure more bottles and we'll procure more of everything um, and we'll we'll kick on with what we're doing and what we've found is just that everybody is looking for the same things everyone's looking with, for the bottles with the sprays on top of them everyone's looking for the same three or four ingredients and um, whereas we'd normally purchase our alcohol from our supplier and it costs x it now is costing three times x which is quite unbelievable in the times like these um so we've kind of gone from doing what we could with what we have to seeing what, how much more we can do and, and, and going on that mission, you know. Well, it is amazing because Simon Harris is there and the government is saying, can you provide solutions, equipment, whatever it is, because we're, we're short on everything, all, all the important things that we need. So it, it's amazing. And I know you're helping local, local communities. You're also making it into a business. So you're keeping yourself supported and you're you're providing stock to big companies who can afford to pay for stuff, which is good. But you're also helping to say with the local uh, charities and people can buy it off you. And you're, you're only charging, you know, you're not gouging, which is a, a really important thing. It's not, you're not going, Oh, I can make a fortune here. It's, it's uh, let's help the community. So do you think, do you think you'll be doing this up after Easter, you know, in the next couple of months, when will your, your lovely chocolate gin come back online again? Well, I'd hope to be making gin sooner rather than later. I think everybody would be like to get back to normal. Um, and as we said at the start, that hopefully this is the good news. So we hopefully will be getting back to making gin in regular time. But um, 
that said, I think I think this is definitely going to change people's perceptions. Uh, I think this is going to change the world's for uh, you know people's habits and people's nature. Um, so look, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully, hopefully we'll be we'll be cutting down the production as soon as ever possible. Um, but then it, it might just be something that in the in the long run there's going to be a greater demand for hand sanitizer. I think people are going to have a little bit of hand sanitizer in their pocket or in their handbag. I definitely know that I'll be keeping a bottle in my car um, and just kind of regularly using it and, and people are going to be washing their hands more and stuff after this. There'll be probably a, a good bit less physical contact in the world after this. Um, but people are definitely going to be a lot more conscious. So look, maybe it is something that we've inadvertently added a, a, a string to our bow, as they say. Yes, um, yeah. Strange but times. hopefully we'll be back to regular gin making duties. I hope so too. But I think I want to commend you for helping in the local community and helping, you know, where people who are scared and worried. And we know hand washing is very effective, but if you have to go out and you're touching things and you haven't got maybe a face mask and you want to be able to think that perhaps you might keep yourself safer. So I want to commend you and your father for what you're doing. It's fantastic. And if people want to, uh, I'm not going to give out your phone number because everybody has your phone number. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, is there a website or a Facebook What's the best way to, to, to reach out yeah. by, by so, or to request uh, sanitizer? So, um, as I said, we're, we're, trying to keep it, we're trying to keep it local. So, um, I'd, I'd love to be able to produce enough that we could, we could cover. And, I mean, if anybody in the country wants it, they can go onto our website and purchase. But I just don't think we're at that capacity yet. Um, I'm, I'm getting so many phone calls and emails, um, as I said, I, I, that I, I just can't answer every single one. So what we've decided to do is just, just to keep an eye on, our, on both our Facebook and our Instagram. You can also contact us through the website and we'll hopefully get some kind of an automated response to you to let you know what the story is. Um, yeah. But the best way to keep updates is, is our Facebook and Instagram and you'll get us on both of those platforms um, by following at Bonac Irish Gin. That's B-O-N-A-C Irish Gin all one word obviously okay perfect so people can reach out and i totally appreciate the fact you, you're going to start local and that's what this world is happening uh the world is changing you're going to work local first of all so if you're a local business or individual you have more chance of being able to purchase your product which is fair exactly. enough yeah that's no, cool well thank you so much indeed today gavin clifford for taking the time out talking about a your career and b making hand sanitizer i'm sure that wasn't your passion i'm sure you didn't think no. be making hand sanitizer but it's an amazing people are innovative and caring and looking after their community so thank you so much for your time this morning gavin thank you very much for having me on much appreciated no you're very good and just a quick shout out before we finish uh, the grafton barbers connor and huey McAllister, they sent a call out they want to thank all the frontline workers men presumably but you can get a free haircut or a free voucher to come and visit their salons after the COVID. So go to their, their, web, their website, graftonbarbers.com, and you can get a free voucher for any frontline workers, um, either your, yourself or friends and family. So that's all we have time for now. Thank you again so much to our, my, my guest today, Gavin Clifford. Thank you to Marlene Murphy for producing Gavin Dowd and Sound. And if you have any other Wicklow heroes, send them our way. We want to speak to them. Uh, be good, be safe, and help others. Thank you very much. <laughs>